So who are you? <laughs> uh, I'm Andy Edmonds. I uh, uh, do relevance measurement uh, and a little bit of data mining here at MSN Search. Well, MSN Search. This is the first time I've been in MSN Search land. We've been eager to have you for a while. Thank you. And uh, I noticed that the uh, search engine keeps getting better and better. So I, I guess you're one of the guys responsible for that. Well, I certainly uh, deliver the data. Eric over here is the really a little more on the responsible Hi. end. <laughs> Uh, but I, I measure it, and I can agree with you. Yes, it very much is getting better. Yeah. So when when are you going to be perfect? <laughs> That's a loaded question. Because can you ever be a perfect search engine? I don't think we can. We can certainly answer qu questions better than any search engine on the planet, and, and we're we're aiming for that soon. Okay. Soon as in months, years, decades. <laughs> <laughs> at, at this stage, we've got to. I love I love putting people. <laughs> depends on which executive we talk to. <laughs> Well, you're the guy who actually, you guys are the two of the guys who build the search engine, so I know I'm going to get the truth from you, <laughs> or from the executives. So, you know, if I go and ask Bill, I'll get a, a pretty, good, pretty good answer, politically correct answer. We have a good shot of matching our competitors this year. Okay. The challenge is going to be designing a system that does better than anything that's already out there. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's really where we're, where we're spinning our wheels to, uh, to figure out. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about what, what you do. You know, or what both of you do? Well, the the uh, the most interesting thing that I can tell you about is uh, is the change we've made in our in our recent uh, engine under uh, pinnings, and that is introducing a neural network. Mm. So What's a what is a neural network? First of all, a neural network is a uh, machine learning technique that was inspired by human uh, cognition. Okay. And particularly the anatomy of, of human cognition neurons, hence the neural network. Um, it uh, is a way of learning. It's really a way of doing a machine learning process, right? So it, it, you end up with this black box that can solve problems. Okay. And uh, is there anything you'd add at the definition level? Um, sure. Uh, Eric Selberg, I, I work on the uh, relevance premise and search. Um, what, what, a, what a neural net is, is as, as Andy mentioned, it's, it's an artificial construct which is trying to model um, essentially a classification system right. where, in this case, we're trying to model ranking. Okay. okay, what results should come above other results? Simple as that. Right. Um, how, do, how does it differ from other search engines I, I use? Because I, I, I use quite a few search engines. and. They all seem to work the same way, right? In you more you in just balance. use those Google engines. We know you. Well, I didn't need to, you didn't need to <laughs> mention any names, but, well, but since well, you did, well, well, I do use Google a lot. Yes, they're, they're, they're a good engine, as is Yahoo. Um, we don't know what, what exactly they use because they haven't told anybody. Right. Um, well, they, they, they have the page rank, which is inbound links, right? Certainly. So um, we kind of separate out some of, some of the technology. Um, so... The way we look at um, documents and queries is there is a query independent rank, often called like a document prior or, or static rank, and, and then there's the actual uh, dynamic rank or, or end of line relevance. Okay. How, how much so do you match the query? How much do you match the query? Okay. okay. So page rank is effectively it's document prior. It's probably it's not the first, but it's probably the most well known way of saying okay, independent of any query we've ever seen or will see, yeah. how important is this document? To really think of it as an ordering of documents from most important all the way to, to least important. Okay, so right. we just did a search on camcorder, the word camcorder. Yeah. So I use camcorders and exactly. I kind of like searching on are there new ones coming out and all that fun stuff, and what are the reviews and right. stuff like that. So how would, your, how would the neural net bring me back a better result so, than... So let's, let's talk about the two components here. Okay. All right. So what all three engines, all of the major engines use, you know, us, Google, Yahoo, we have a static component, right? So we say, well, what are important websites out there? And for camcorders, I mean, just in general, yeah. in general, Sony is an important site, Sony.com, Panasonic.com, you know, on down the list. Whereas, you know, Bob's camcorder supply, probably not that important. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, a, a site that's going to be of, uh, say, medium importance might be uh, uh, dpreview.com. It's where I go a lot for for digital camera preview stuff. It, it's of medium importance. I mean, it's, it's useful, but not the world's best site for everything. Right. Now, you do a search for camcorder, okay, 
and say, all right, you're looking at camcorders, so let's apply both what is on the page or the site about camcorders plus the importance of the page. Yeah. Right? Now, how do you rank them? Who ranks important? You know, how do you guys come up with the uh, idea of the importance. importance of a so, page? So PageRank mm -hmm. was the one of the first published algorithms that kind of did this, right? And they use a... And before uh, then, there was Alta Vista and, uh, and, yep. uh, and Yahoo had search engines too, right? Yep. And that, when I had my NetMeeing site, I remember on, Yacht, on Alta Vista or Yahoo, my site would always come up number one on all three engines. But number two on Alta Vista and Yahoo was a sex site. So that was clearly not quite what you were expecting to see when you search for net meeting, right? And maybe it was, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, for me it was uh, it was it, it wasn't even a good sex site, by the way. Uh, okay. <laughs> As you found out, you know, sure. okay. well, I, I try, This is how uh, uh, brand recognition for some of these things is built because I knew yeah. net meeting very well because I was in the net meeting yeah. community. So. And Google didn't pull up weird stuff. No, so the, the question is, how good is your concept of, of document prior static rank or yeah. importance? Uh, and then how good is your ability to match all the features of the query the documents to satisfy the customer's need? And the neural net sort of does the merge of those yeah. different pieces. Right, right. And the real innovation of the neural net is that it, it, it can scale to huge complexity. So neural nets, you essentially just throw more sort of units into them, throw more neurons at it, sort of like the brain, and it can learn fast. Um, and then when you go to multiple layer networks, it can learn exceptions, things like flash pages, right? There's no, typically very little body text for flash pages. Body text is one of the contributing factors, anchor text, URL, title, or others. Uh, the neural net can learn to emphasize yeah. the title and anchor in the case of a flash page. Ooh. A multiple layer neural net can learn these special cases. You, okay, in the old world, I sensed that there was a, a, a set of variables that you guys tracked on the page. You know, what is in the title text, what is in the A hrefs, what is in the P tag, what is in the B tag. What is the neural net is what sorts all that out. As so, as so the, you guys don't have actual control. You can't go and tweak any more uh, one variable and change the result set. The, neur uh, the system is now learning from itself? It's a, it's a living creature. We, 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 let's not talk about where, what it learns from. Okay. Uh, but it, it, it is a living creature that, that sort of has a few less uh, knobs that we can turn. Okay. So that that sounds like it's... It, that sounds like how you're trying to compete is you're building a system that learns from itself where other systems might have been needing more manual knobs? Well, or? let's not say that it learns from itself, but, but we will say that, that it has the capacity to okay. do more complex things than, uh, than anybody's ever published a system that, that is capable of doing. Okay. So nobody's ever talked about a system that has the capacity to, to better embody human intelligence than, right. than our current system. Does this mean search engine optimization techniques are going out? And for the people who don't recognize that term, there's a whole industry of people who do consulting to companies and spammers and other th mm -hmm. other people to try to get you know to try to get their page higher on this. First of all, they want it on the first page of the result set. So when I search on camcorder, if you're not on this home page, you you really don't exist, do you? Because I track research shows that most people. If they do a search term, they won't go to the second or third or fourth page. Is that true? You, you don't exist yeah. for the average user. For for, for the Average user in query, yeah, but so so the question is, what kind of query are you doing, right? If you're doing a search in camcorder and you're trying to get a lot of information, then you might go to page two, three, or four, yeah. right? Because because you're consuming all of that. If you're doing a search for you know Mayor's Island Retreat in Tofino, if you don't see that on the first page, you're like, okay, let me try a different query. Maybe it's just Mayor's Retreat in Tofino because there's only one place. It's got to be somewhere. So, so it really depends. Um, for a number of, of people doing search engine optimization, they're wanting to have it on the first page. They want it to be in the first couple results, um, and they're they're willing to really spend a lot of money to do that. Yeah. So, and time. And time. And, yeah. But with a with a neural net, is it going to be consistent throughout the engine? Are you going to be able to learn one technique to get your page up? I think it'll be a lot harder. I think we're, we've up, we're up the bar. There will no longer be a formula that you can count on, right? Because the thing could have exceptions, right? It could yeah. know that once you reach a certain critical mass of keyword stuffing, to shut you down. 
um, and you'll never know where that where that cutoff is. Where right. otherwise you might have seen it you slowly approaching that cutoff or something. Okay. Um, <laughs> so that's a, a, a change in how the engines are are working. And you, you what what part did you play in in doing the, the engine? So. Uh, so, so my team is responsible. We're, we actually build it. So, okay. um, you know, Andy's in charge of, of on the measurement side of things, um, kind of seeing where we are, where we need to improve, where we're doing well, and then I kind of say, well, great, where we're not doing well, let's go and, and do better. So now, how do you know if you're doing well or not? Other than guys like me come in and yell at you, like, hey, my my result set isn't very good. <laughs> you know, like, well, that's one way. That's <laughs> one way. <laughs> not very effective, though. Is we it? a lot of it. Though. We <laughs> a lot of, uh, it's, it's it's actually surprisingly effective in a, in a number of ways, right? So, um, uh, you know, customers, especially like you know, employees here or, or just customers out there in the world, they they they're passionate. They kind of tell us, "Hey, for this query, you you turn this random garbage result, right?" They tell us that eight thousand times a day. Yeah, okay. you get eight thousand emails a day. Yes, give or take. Ooh. Yeah, I'm glad I don't have your email. <laughs> My email is bad enough to get you. So, so what you can do is figure out. Okay, let's, let's yeah. look at some of these and see if we can find some some patterns here and correct for that. Like maybe we have a bug in the system that only manifests itself in certain ways. Maybe we're we're overcounting or discounting something improperly. I mean, whatever it is. Yep. Um, so, I mean, I mean, there, there there are a number of ways of ways you can do that. Now, measuring measuring relevance is hard. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've been doing information retrieval now for over a decade, and um, they've been the, the science has been there since the 1960s with Gerald Salton, and they've got a bunch of relevance measures, and every one of them has some problem, right? You're measuring binary relevance, and so you don't have gradations. You are what are those? Uh, the classic connotation of relevance is it's relevant or it's not relevant. Okay. Um, and this all came from the, the intelligence community, meaning like CIA, NSA, that them, those folks. They wanted to create uh, briefs. But really, for so, camcorders, there's great answers, there's okay answers, and there's bad answers. I think right. it's worse than that. I think uh, when you're thinking of camcorder, there's three different modes you're in, right? One mode is I'm thinking of buying a camcorder, and therefore I want to see JVC, Sony, Panasonic, and know my choices, right? Then the second mode is I want to do some research about those camcorders that I've sort of picked out because I've, I've figured out that JVC has a $350 one and Sony has a $350 one and, and Panasonic has a $350 one. And now I'm trying to figure out which one's the best out of those. You know, So now I'm looking at blog yep. search, you know, blog comments. I'm looking at the, at the pages like what you mentioned, the DP reviews, the review sites. And then the third thing is I want to buy one. I've decided I want a Panasonic and I want the best price. And that's where you want to see all the intermediaries and you want to see ratings on those interme intermediaries. You know? So query intent, right, is good. Yeah. But even given just a query intent, right, given one of those intents, there are a gradations of quality. Absolutely. And, uh, and the general mode is get the best stuff at the top and if the user is not happy with that, they can continue to search or refine their query. Yeah. And people typically refine their query pretty quickly. Yeah. Everybody but those darn Japanese. <laughs> they, they have a hard time, uh, the, the keyboard input is different. So the Japanese market will actually spend a lot more time evaluating individual queries uh, because it's a lot harder to refine it. Oh, that's Typing it, because there are th thousands of, of potential inputs, mm -hmm. um, means that their, their willingness to, eva to wade through a bunch of search results is higher than the, than the U.S. market where they can easily change. No, it's interesting by. that you know that. How do you know that? Uh, we log a, a fair amount of the system, and okay. uh, and uh, I spend a fair amount of time data mining, writing. So I did that with SQL Yukon. Um, now, how, how can a user procedure. figure out what you guys are logging? Are, is there a privacy policy? There is a there is a privacy policy, and uh, when just like all the other engines. Because that sounds a little scary to me. Well, I, you're you're one of those guys at Microsoft who, <laughs> when you say you're logging the, it's like, oh, what is Microsoft tracking? We're we're doing it to improve the customer experience, um, and you see it on our engine and on the others, redirects will happen when you click. And it happens for a small percentage of searches, randomly uh, determined, without any identifying information to you, the user. Okay. And you'll see some link that's more like msn.com, question mark, the URL you want to go to. Same thing happens on Google um, and Yahoo, for that matter. Okay. So that all, all three engines are doing the same kind of tracking to figure out what people are actually clicking on, how much 
time they're spending on the search pages and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Is that how your neural net really learns from itself? No comment on that one. <laughs> we, 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 we I gotta, knew. <laughs> we gotta keep some of that uh, under, the, under the covers. Cool. But I, I can. I, we, any educated person can make some guesses that you're looking at what you're clicking on and learning from that, right? So if I have a result page of 10 results and everybody's clicking on the seventh result, that tells your engine something. I've, I've heard you make those guesses on IT conversations, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm sure Google and Yahoo are doing the same kind of thinking because I've heard them speak as well. Um, where do we go from it? So what do we, as an end user, what do I need to know about searching? What, what would you like to train me about how to become a better searcher? We have a, a pretty good a bunch of advanced syntax, right? So okay. for you, right, given that you're a heavy-duty geek, let's take that one a little bit. We uh, have been working hard to innovate on syntax. Eric's driven a, a lot of, of very interesting mods. Mm -hmm. um, and we packaged those up recently uh, for the PDC. Yeah. You, you showed a screenshot of this thing just a few minutes ago, um, which get the talking rain out of here is a PDC version of MSN Search, yep. which allows you to do blog-only search. So the demo here is PDC, here. and from PDC we click the Blogs button, okay. which adds a special operator, has feed. <coughs> has feed essentially turns MSN Search into a blog search engine. Okay. Um, so, okay. And what's, what's different about blog search than regular search? We define block search as search over pages that have RSS, Atom, or XML. So it restricts the content to that set of sites. Okay. It's a rough approximate for, for identifying blogs. It identifies a few other things like news.com. But yeah. it's a great way of getting a subset well, Microsoft of Microsoft PressPass has RSS and BBC yep. has RSS now. Do you know what percentage of sites have an RSS or an Atom feed now? We could find out. Eric, do you have a guess? <laughs> Um, you don't have to do that right now. To the web, not many. But, uh, so 10 million has a has feed, and then if we just do a blank search of web, um, let's see if we what's the way to get the five billion. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So our index is five billion. So it's five billion. Now, how real is that index number? Because I, I don't believe any of the numbers I see on the on any of these search engines right now. Clearly, five billion is a subset of the web. Right. Yeah. The web is, is much larger. We think, based upon our static um, prior uh, document in, uh, metric, that it is the best five billion. Okay. <laughs> so, but you're, it, do you have any idea how much you're missing out of all the websites out there? We, uh, we know a fair amount of things that we're including that we'd not like to include, right? So okay. one of the goals is to get the spam out of there and the, and the right stuff in. Yeah. Um, in terms of how much of our, our competitive gap is associated with the content we have versus the content we don't have, we think that that's a relatively low number. So for instance, MSDN was a big problem for us for a long time. Yeah. We now have over double the amount of content from MSDN in our index than Google does. Interesting. We are now a better site to search MSDN than our competitors. Can you give us some example of that? Well, I have an example for you. It used to be when you searched on Windows API names, it would take you to some random site like my blog. <laughs> so uh, like if, if you used to search MSN, let's do it. In fact, destroy window right is an API I, name, and it used to take me take you to my blog. You can see that's already in my history. Yeah. I, I am uh, I have heard your feedback, <laughs> and I'm tracking that one. And um, I think it's one word actually. Destroy thank window. you. Yeah. So there are a bunch of stuff there with with yeah. the spy guys. There it is. Um, new MSDN.Microsoft is number two. It's not number one, but it is number two. Okay. We we in, in measurement we'd give ourselves a fair number of points for getting into position two. Yeah. We, but we you like to clearly you want to be one, uh, number one so that you can hit the lucky guess kind of thing. But you can see we get um, all of the sites other than result number one are uh, are related to the uh, to the API. Yeah. Um, so in answer to your question. Yeah. Um, it's I'm being pretty tough on you guys, right? You know, <laughs> being in third and coming up, you know, it, it's it, look. That's why we're here, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it's no fun to be, you know, number one and just kind of sitting your high horse. Um, so, a key question is how many documents is enough? And um, usually, the answer is for any one, uh, you know, customer question, it's mm -hmm. usually one. One document's enough because you just want the answer. Yeah. Um, now. Is an index of 5 billion better than an index of 
eight billion, which is what Google says they're at, or twenty billion, which is what Yahoo says they're at, even yeah. though there's lots of debate about that twenty billion number. I don't know. Clearly, if you have twenty billion legit documents and they're all re requested by users, that's better than having five. Yeah. Um, however, having twenty billion documents of which you only show one billion, then you've got nineteen billion documents just sitting around collecting dust on on disks. Right. Um, We've made a, a substantial effort to make sure that we have, in, in our estimate, again, using the um, portal ordering or, or static rank, whatever you want to call it, um, the, the five billion most important pages so we can show our customers the best content. Google and Yahoo have done the same thing. Yeah. Right. Um, now, the hard part is as you increase the size of your index, um, you're going to get more of the stuff you want. You're also going to get more of the stuff you don't want. Yeah. Right? And yeah. you mean like spam or sex stuff, if you're not searching for sex. Right? So, so you're going to get a lot, so you're get a lot of spam. Yeah. Right? You're going to get a lot of, you know, you know, your porn adult, stuff like that. You're also going to get a lot of crap. Yeah. Okay? Um, in, in particular, Some one of my... my blog's crap. <laughs> you'll get all scoble site. I mean, you, really, <laughs> you need it all. <laughs> Well, and that's a good uh, good talk about noise, right? I I think on uh, Google I'm number three for the word offshoring. I'm not an expert on offshoring, so but you I, could be. I could be, <laughs> but I got that ranking because yes. somebody who is an expert linked to one of yep. my posts, yeah. and all of a sudden I'm up on a page. Yeah. So, so there are problems. So well, yeah. Is do you consider that noise, or do you consider that? That, that, a, that I'm not so much worried about. That's that's an issue with ranking. Okay. Um, noise. For example, we had this problem for a while. There was, um, it was some college in Glass Torian, so some, some English college in, in Torian, right? They had an online calendar, right? But it didn't look like a dynamically generated calendar program, it just looked like um, a very, very deep site. Now, it was dynamic calendar, therefore it was infinitely extensible in either direction. And so our spider happily went in both directions. Right. And so we <laughs> and shoot a lot of the research future, all of the past. <laughs> yeah. And, and so the, 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 the trick is, you know, when you have a huge index, you want to make sure that you're getting reasonable stuff. And when, when your index grows, I'm actually a lot more concerned about how much useless crap you're going to get, you know, from the is online that a calendars. Term? Yes. <laughs> and, um, and another, another fun one. I will do this. In we my... give you the uh, Ian uh, McDonald uh, honorary swearing word. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that'd be technical crap. All right. Um, useless crap. The uh, other thing. I mean, this was a fun thing for Alta Vista a while back. Yep. Um, one of the spiders played a game called Hunt the Wumpus. This is an online game where you kind of click on links to move from one room to another, trying to avoid the wumpus. And it turns out the spider had managed to play the game. Uh, Excellent. Yeah. So I mean, games with spiders. Keep keep your, uh, your, your spiders busy, right? You know, when I was doing a crawler back at University of Washington, one of the things I did was I discovered um, the hard way that one of the machines, Augustus.CSSR.WashingtonEDU, has the census data. Yep. All of it. Ooh. Yes. That's a good store. <laughs> yeah. Um, and my spider happily downloaded all of it. Yeah. It, uh, did, didn't make my little alphas very happy. So there's a, I mean, there's a lot of junk out there that is not really designed to be consumed by uh, people or when by women. little engines. alphas, so yeah, it, deck yeah, alphas, deck alphas, yeah. and this, and this spider. Yep, interesting. Yeah, so it's so, not a Pentium under your desk. Huh? <laughs> uh, no, no, this, this is back in University of Washington uh, where uh, we okay. were all at deck shops since. Well, deck gave us free equipment and Microsoft didn't. Uh. They, they since changed yeah. that around. <laughs> yeah, we got to talk to Bill about that. <laughs> no, no, no. Now, now, now there's lots of Intel boxes running Windows, but at the time, you know, uh, Intel said, nope, nothing for you, and Microsoft said, nope, not much for you, and Dex said, eh, here's some alphas. Do you guys talk about what your data your data uh, store looks like? Your, uh, sure. Your sure. machine I mean, store. What, what do you call it? <laughs> data, center. data center. Your uh, data center. What are you? Have we gone public with, with the, that information? Well, let's give it a shot. Okay. Um, yes, yes. We'll see if it gets you PR. <laughs> so we, we have aimed at a, at a really high-end machine kind of scenario. Okay. So we certainly have uh, thousands of machines. Um, is it the, the PR number? Let's, 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 let's try this again. <laughs> Eric's over here going, no, we're not releasing that number. We're no, no, going, 64-bit uh, Windows machines. Good stuff. Lots of them. We can see, we can see <laughs> in a big, big building. So yes, that, that's the cool part. We we are using parallel processing and neural networks on super high-end Windows machines 
with oodles of RAM, oodles of disk, and 64-bit OS. Okay. Um, it's a great Microsoft story. Um, Windows is scaling and, and doing a damn good job. Someday I'm going to get in that data center and get video. <laughs> <laughs> so, so <laughs> you guys are also the first uh, search engine to be XHTML compliant? or We are the standard? most compliant. Uh, we, we, we are the only engine that if, that fully passes the uh, the uh, CSS uh, or the XHTML validation, yes, the yeah. W3C thing. Um, I think Yahoo is darn close. Yeah. Um, Google fails miserably. Oh. Um, well, you do something better. Suckers! <laughs> hey, we, do, we do a fair number of things better. Yeah. Um, One other thing that I really am excited about is RSS search, too, right? So you can do a query on, you know, a little hotel or anything and subscribe to the RSS feed for that query. And right. I think you guys are the first ones to do that, or, or pretty close to the we, first We ones. were the first of the major three. Yeah. Um, one, one of the, the, the fun things I'd like to kind of say is that um, most of the features that you're seeing, um, uh, they've been around for quite some time. It's rare that us or Google or Yahoo pioneer something that wasn't in something three, four, five, six years ago. Yeah. Um, so we're starting to see a lot of that. Now, now, we are coming up with some new things that nobody has done, right? Um, like RSS was uh, the first one of the big guys to do it. Yeah. Um, and to be fair, the, the smaller guys were Feedster and Technorati. And yeah, Hugsub yeah, and exactly. Well, Ice Rock gets out there. But yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, it, it takes a while for RSS to get adopted, and then we say, yes, we'll make an RSS feed for search. Well, yeah. I'm sure somebody else had actually done RSS searches for Google, Yahoo, us, on top of us. Yeah. It was not that hard. Um, so we just saved some tr people some trouble. Uh, but, you know, the nice thing about kind of having three main competitors again um, is you're starting to see the same kind of innovation and uh, customer satisfaction in terms of, of utility that you did back in 97, 98 when you had AltaVista and Lycos and Excite um, and Yahoo all trying to duke it out to be to be number one. Yeah. And they were all releasing really, really cool features, right? I mean, AltaVista came out, they were fast, and they had Babelfish, and, you know, Excite was... That was a language translation engine. Language translation engine, thank you. It's still yeah. used today. Uh, you know, and that's, that's true, too, right? Uh, mm -hmm. None of the big three are just about search, right? They're, yeah. You guys do a lot of things like news and... Uh, Mm -hmm. I don't know what else. Do you you're seeing, Earth. you're seeing news. You're seeing maps. Um, you're seeing the combination of uh, search and and maps geospatial yeah. uh, positioning, which is very interesting. You are seeing a lot more. Um, usually, when I say news, I mean like mainstream media kind of things. Yeah. Um, but you're also seeing kind of kind of your blogs and and, and syndicated stuff like that. Um, you know, we're seeing more with news groups, message forums. There's a wealth around image search now. People are starting to play with multimedia in a meaningful way to see what that looks like and how that would work. Um, one of it, it, is the big business gone? Is, is has Google nailed the, how uh, you know search is going to be monetized, or is there going to be something else? They, they, they so, so and actually, I would say Overture, which is now Yahoo, uh, demonstrated a super effective monetization medium for search, which is uh, paid advertising, contextual advertising. Uh, Google refined it, and and now we have, are using a business model, so it's an advertising-based business model. Yeah. We're no longer doing things like, you know, InfoSeek back in the day tried to sell you uh, results 19 mm -hmm. and higher, yeah. right? We're no longer selling searches. We're not in the Intomi market where we sell bulk queries to portals, yeah. right? Um, we're, we're not in the bulk advertising space where we'll just put up banners everywhere, yeah. right? So, so we've got a business model that works, and it works really, really, really well, yeah. right? It's not going to be the only business model that, that we use, um, but it, it is going to be one that you see us, Google and Yahoo, uh, really go after to, to kind of you know, make sure we say, yes, this is where we want money to, to, to go. Right. And the, the thing is, everybody's kind of looking at this going, okay, you know, who's going to win, you know, Google, us, Yahoo, right, um, from a business perspective, and I, I think they're kind of looking at things a little myopically. It's, we're, we're really kind of, in a, you know, innovating a new advertising medium that works. Yeah. And so the question is, um, if you're an advertiser, where you're going to spend your money, is it going to be in, say, People Magazine, yeah. or is it going to be on a search engine? 
Nope. Right. Absolutely and so, so that's that's what's starting to happen, which is the the advertising dollar that market is still huge, and now we're kind of encroaching on the entire space. Right. But through the evolution of the marketplace, people advertisers are going to be able to better reach the people who are their customers. Yeah. That, yeah. that game is not done. There's a lot more left in actually monetizing the tail and connecting um, people to the products that they want to consume. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I mean, even even the, the uh, our competitive offerings are, are not as good at doing that as we're going to see in, in just a few years. Really? I mean, you can't talk to me about what what kinds of things you're expecting to see that aren't there yet. Or in terms of advertising, why yeah. why why do you say that? Uh, advertising isn't done yet. Why, why do you say that Google hasn't nailed it or even MSN hasn't nailed it yet? Well, I think the the, uh, the scope, of the, the number of products in the world and the number of people in the world is such that we've only seen the tip of the iceberg. Right? You can't search for the most obscure thing around um, that only you and, and you know twelve other people in the in the world care about, and find the perfect vendor for that. Yeah, um, it's eBay. <laughs> <laughs> eBay, yeah, one to one. We were just doing some searches before we started the tape, like on Seattle hotels, right? And you still get noisy results. You hotels don't get... are really tough. Why, why are they so tough? The the their business relationships allow sort of this referral. It's it's an affiliate kind of marketing. I space. call them intermediaries, right? Yeah. And and it's also a really people easy... who are in between you and you know Sheridan Hotel or in between you and Marriott. Yeah, you know. I think it's, it's really like easy. Expedia, right? It's an easy set of databases to get, and it's an easy kind of website to build. Um, I think I don't have great data on this, but my guess is that it's really easy to get pictures of of all the ho of all the Holiday Inns in, in the U.S. and their zip codes, and um, and put up a site that, well, that tries to be an intermediary. I mean, the, the way I kind of look at it, what what the web has done. So I, I actually think it might have been uh, Bill Gates who kind of made the quote about the web being this thing which is to reduce friction, you know, which is a euphemism to remove the middleman. Yeah, and I think actually the exact opposite is true, yeah. which is the web has enabled a new kind of proliferation of middlemen. <laughs> of middlemen. In fact, it's it's really rewarded them quite handsomely. So now they're all competing. So if, if again, say you're a hotel, yeah. right? You actually don't care how you get a reservation, and you're going to give a bounty to anybody who can get you a reservation. Yeah. And, and you don't care who they are. Yeah. It doesn't matter if they're local, if they're global. If it's a travel agent, if it's like your mom, you just don't care. You want the reservation. That's how you make money. Yep. Right. So now anybody can make reservations for any hotel. Right. And again, if you're buying, you know, booking a hotel. Yep. You care about price. Yep. Right. You, you really don't care whether this guy gets a twenty percent cut or this guy gets a one percent cut. You're like, what's the cheapest price? I'll go with that. Yep. Um, so again, it's created this interesting market of hordes of middlemen, all basically buying and selling the same stuff. Yeah. Now, part of the, the challenge that we have going forward for uh, enabling web commerce for things like you know booking or buying things or, or whatnot is, is to really kind of figure out how, which things, or which sites and people do we trust and which ones don't we trust, which ones look legitimate, which ones don't. Um, and that, that's a challenging problem because no longer I'm sorry, what search is turning into, yeah. right, you asked this question a bit ago, and this is, this is my take. Search, before there was a lot of commerce, was about finding information in a generally trustworthy world, because yeah. there just wasn't anything there. That's right? true. You're just looking, I'm looking for a place to download this file, or I'm looking for this timetable, or something like that. Oh, that's, that's true. You know, when I started yeah. blogging five years ago, there was only 200, 300 tech blogs, and they were all... We all knew each other, right? Yeah. Now we have what are called splogs, right? Uh, spam blogs. Yeah. People go to you know Blogger or MSN Spaces and open up a hundred blogs to try to spam your engines, right? Yeah. So what, what's what's happened now because of again the business model's proven successful, right? Is uh, you're, you're moving from a world where you're trying to find information, knowing that it's uh, trustworthy to try to find the trustworthy information from all the stuff it's not. So search relevance is really turning into not just relevant, this is relevant to your query, but this is relevant and trustworthy and will satisfy your need. Yeah. Right. 
and, and that becomes a much more challenging problem, one that, again, we, Google, Yahoo, are really kind of innovating. Traditional information retrieval doesn't really assume there's an adversary. Yeah. It does not assume somebody's trying to fool you. Okay? In our world, that's now life, and so we have to understand what makes something trustworthy and legitimate versus not. And it goes all the way to links, right? People are, are gaming or having a you know fun time manipulating the, the search results for certain phrases. Oh, yeah, I linked to one the other day, right? The uh, famous uh, miserable, failure. Failure. Miser yes. miserable failure if you do that search on, on both the, you and uh, Google's yeah. engine. You get a interesting, and we'll just say interesting so, result. But, we won't know, tell you what result you get, but it's certainly not a result you would expect to see for searching for miserable failure. Well, right? well, if you're, new, if yeah. you're in the political sorry, world, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> depends on your political persuasion, and actually so, it, it's very interesting to compare your engine versus Google's that's engine. That's right. Um, <laughs> a lot of it, quite, quite frankly, that's cool. Yeah. Right. So, so, I mean, the concept of Google long has been around for a while, which is um, lots of people, and as time goes on, it'll acquire a large degree of lots. Uh, can basically say, okay, I think this phrase um, you should, know, be defined, should be defined way. with this page. Yeah. Okay. That's what the people who did miserable failure did. There are a bunch of other ones that that, that yeah, were. Yeah. Google bombing basically um, is talking ten A-list bloggers into linking to something with a term, which yeah. helps uh, is one of the key metrics you guys use to build relevancy, right? Right. And, and in particular. Um, if, if you pick phrases that aren't commonly used to identify something, yeah. it's, like, it's like a trademark, right? Suddenly, case in point, we now have Windows Vista. Yeah. Well, up until a couple months ago, Windows Vista didn't mean anything. Yeah. There right? was zero links. The there was zero links. Now, was we have a bunch of websites, we have a bunch of links pointing to Windows Vista, so now Windows Vista means something, yeah. right? Same, same concept, you know, it doesn't have to be a big corporate trademark branding thing. I mean, just people can decide, we're going to say, you know, mumble means frauds yeah. means, you know, Andy Edmonds page, right? And, and, and they can do that. That's cool. That's natural. It's what you expect. Same thing, Hurricane Katrina, right? Previously, nobody cared. Now, people do. And it means something. Um, so that's kind of the power of the web and also kind of the power of, of language to create meaning from things that, that formerly didn't have it. And yeah, yeah we, pick, we pick that up. I mean, again, the search engines, us, Google, Yahoo, we're trying to model the human notion of relevance. Yeah. Right. Are there people in your engine who are more relevant than other people? You know, when they link to something, does your engine say, "Oh, X Y Z guy linked to that, so I'm going to put that high on the page where somebody else who you say isn't in, trustworthy"? In terms of a person, um, no. Like, yeah. we 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 love your blog, but you know, if you if you put something on your blog just because it's you, well, we don't care because we don't have a model of you. Hmm. Um, what we do do is say, okay, is this site important or is that site important? For yeah. example, if, again, CNN, pretty important news site, right? If CNN is linking to somebody, that conveys more authority than, say, if I link to somebody off my own personal blog. Right. Right. How do you um, tell the difference? Do you, did so you that, go that's back to the, the, the ordering of importance, right? This, yeah. is, this is how PageRank came about. Because um, PageRank just works on how many inbound links... No, 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 no. Oh, really? No. <laughs> tell me how. Tell me how. This so, so the, the the base level is just in link count. How many links do you have pointing into you? Okay. That's really easy. That was actually web crawler did that. Oh, really? Okay. Okay. Um, what PageRank did is said, well, instead of just counting links going into it, let's actually say, all right, your rank is some base rank, some small amount of weight, yeah. plus the rank of all the people pointing into you. Okay. Okay. And cascading, and so it's a cascading effect. effect. So, sure. what you do is you, is you create the graph, and yeah. then you kind of iterate because because you have cycles. And so, you know, your rank is based on on what somebody points to you, but you might point to them, and so you have to kind of figure out what the equilibrium point is. Right. Um, but so you iterate, you figure out the equilibrium points of everybody, and then it kind of turns out that some people have a lot of rank because a lot of people are pointing to them. And they then distribute that rank to other people. Right. Right. So that's how, again, if you are linked from you know top ten bloggers, suddenly you have a lot of rank. Yeah. Because they're passing their rank on to you. And you give it away pretty freely, right? Oh yeah. You, you link yeah. out all the time. Yep. Uh, yeah. Pass around. Exactly. Which actually uh, messes with your engines, right? You know. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, sometimes. it teaches us. It teaches us. Well, in most cases. The, yeah. the, I mean, the original model of PageRank, and again, PageRank. 
Google's modified it heavily because the naive version doesn't work anymore. Okay. Um, is that a link was something that conveyed trust. Okay. And so, you know, the more links coming in, the more trust. And you want to have trust moving from highly trusted sites down the chain. So again, okay. your CNNs of the world have a huge degree of trust and, and they're able to dole it out, whereas you know, smaller sites don't, because not a lot of people trust them, therefore they don't have a lot of trust, that's just the way it works. Yeah. Um, again, because of spam, they figured out how to basically create false trust, and so you have to do a lot of work to understand what's legitimate versus what is fraudulent. Yeah. And that, that's a, a huge effort on our part, on Google's part, on Yahoo's part. So, so again, again, that's how PageRank works. We we do something a little differently. No, I think I I, I think actually I ton, uh, ton who's another guy on your uh, team, um, called me over because I was noticing if you do a search on Scoble, one of the guys who takes my content and republishes it was yep. uh, higher on my name than me. <laughs> I have to call a quick timeout because okay, I'll be right back. All right, <laughs> but so how does that happen? It's a good question. In that particular case, I've noticed, and I haven't actually gone and used our internal tools to sort of figure out exactly what uh, what dials are, are happening there. Uh, presumably, my bet is that your link blog was actually more popular than your real blog with regard to people. No, this paying is attention. a this is another guy. It's not Canal. No, this is another guy who takes my content. In fact, do a search on Scoble and see. It's probably a specificity kind of story. Where I have a feeling it's a URL uh, problem. So you have Kunal, you have Scoble. Okay, now he's gone. That's interesting. So, but Kunal does show up above your real web blog, right? Oh, yeah. So the question is, why is Kunal more relevant to you than, or more relevant to the to the searcher than your web blog? Right. And I think my bet is that we're uh, making that call. Because at one point in time, your link blog was actually more popular and was the subject of more buzz than your real blog. Yeah. I mean, that, the link blog was rocking back before memorandum. Now, that brings up a whole other thing. How, how soon do, do I decay out of the... If I stop posting today, do I forever stay in the engine at number oh, one? Cer spot? Certainly not. Certainly not. Okay, so there's a decay function that if I don't post for a while, I start sliding down the engine. Indeed, page. if we try bumping up the freshness on this search, my bet is that yes, your web blog comes to the top. We've already noticed that you've stopped publishing to Canal. Yeah. And when we tell Amazon Search to use freshness to, to bump the results up, we know that your web blog is the right one. Now, can I do a freshness search on any search? Sure. It's a uh, bracket or FRSH equals some number. But let me show you the really fun way to do it. You click Search Builder. Okay and wait for the page to load, click result ranking, and then bump up updated recently. Interesting. And are you the only engine that does that, of the, of the major three? We are the only engine that allows you to slide some dials with regard to ranking, I okay. believe, yes. Very cool. So that shows you some of the ways that you can play with the results. I, I really like that, having access to some of the variables like that. Um, where else are, can we go? What else is there to know? I mean, I I could talk to you guys about search for years, you know, and go through queries and figure out, you know, why one engine is better than the other. Or, uh, yesterday in the Wall Street Journal, right, the, they talked about how all the engines' numbers that are reported on um, a specific query are pretty fraudulent, <laughs> actually. Yeah, well, I, mean, I better not use a word like that. The lawyers will come well, after well, me. Well, they're, they're not fraudulent there. Estimated. They're estimated, yeah. So what I want to say is, is that when, when we say this is, you know, in our case, we do something grammatically incorrect, like page one of X many thousand results, which is kind of weird. Um, all, all of these are estimates, yeah. right? Because, again, what we're doing is saying, hey, here are the top ten. The reason why we know these are the top ten, again, back to that total importance, yeah. we say, well, using total importance is one of the factors. Say everything else is perfect. These are your best ten, okay. right? Because the other pages just aren't important enough to show. Right. So we can show you here are the top 10 and here are the top 20, 30 on down the list. Um, but we have to estimate, well, how many other pages are, are, are down in there? Right. Now, you can kind of argue, is this a useful number or not? I mean, Yahoo's actually been very um, uh, direct about estimate. They now no longer have the exact number. They have, you know, yeah. 1 to 10 of 40 million 
Well, right. it, you said Windows Vista, right? If you put Windows Vista in the quotes, they're a factor of 10 higher than MSN is, and they're even a factor of two or four uh, over Google. You know, it's, uh, I just don't well, well, believe these, num well, these well, numbers are so wacky and well, so it, disparate. It, it, I, I, again, the question comes down to it, it's easy to have a 20 billion document index. It's hard to have a 20 billion document index if something is good. Yeah. Right. So, case in point, um, how about how do you handle mirrors? Right. Mirrors. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so Sorry. case in point, you know, you've got, you know, there's Microsoft.com, right? I'm sure if you went to, you know, Microsoft.com/slash/something or www.32.microsoft.com, you'd have the same site. Yeah. Right. Um, are those three different pages, or is it the same page? Right. Yeah. You know, and depending on how you count, you can have. Uh, you know differences. Uh, this is a problem on, on some of the blog search engines too. A lot of the blogs uh, spit out an RSS feed, or actually multiple RSS feeds, right? Because there's different flavors. Yep. And then an Atom feed, and they're in the blog search engines four times. You know? Yep. So. So you get your RSS, you know, 09, 10, 20, Atom. You know, maybe you have an old RDF thing. Yeah. Working about, you know, yeah. And if you're Don Box, you have a CDF feed. You know? That's right. <laughs> so I had one of those way back when. You did. <laughs> yes, you did. That's right. So I mean, I mean, you can have you have all all the, the same content basically repackaged, repurposed, but it's the same content. Yeah. Um, you know, or you have the old site versus the new sites. Um, you can have a different URL. My favorite was ESPN.com versus ESPN.SportsZone.com versus. ESPN.go.com versus MSN.ESPN.go.com. These are all the same site, yeah. right? It's just they kind of doctor up the URL, yeah. so it means something different. Uh, so, so again, the back back to what the numbers mean. It's the the, the reality is, if it's greater than a thousand, then it's a thousand, yeah. because we Google and I will only give you a thousand results. Interesting, right? What? Why do you only give a thousand results? Um, it's, it's largely one of performance. Um, this is, again, true of Google and Yahoo, which is um, we kind of say, what are the top, you know, thousand-ish results? We kind of cache those. You can kind of go through that list. But to get more than a thousand, say you want to get all of them, like all Windows Vista results, yep. um, that's actually more of a drain in our system uh, than we would want to allow. Okay. Right? Same thing for Google, same thing for Yahoo. And while we're not terribly concerned about you, one person doing this, um, we're more concerned about basically people who would use this to harvest information. Yeah. You're going to get people just creating bots. We already have enough bot traffic as it is. You know, just bots just to suck all this down. And and so, kind of as a stopgap, it's you know it's a thousand results because we're not, we're really not trying to be a replica for a crawl. Yeah. Right. We're trying to be a search engine. You have an answer. You have a question. We'll give you an answer. That answer should not be ten thousand documents long. How, how does your spider work? What, how, what is a spider or a bot? And and how, as a web page designer, how can I help your spider do its job properly? Okay. So or so a web spider is simply an automated process that goes from one web page to another. Um, it follows links, and each time it finds a page, it puts it um, into our index, uh, you know, for for building. Excuse me. So. As far as what you can do uh, okay. in terms of the search engine optimization, we will not say anything directly because okay. there's a community out there that's paid rather handsomely to, to do this, and we try not to help them. Okay. Uh, so, so helping the little guy usually helps them even more, Yeah. Uh, sadly. What we do say is, is you need to make sure that your page is, is well designed okay. and very clear and really conveys what it is you're trying to say on the page. So, case in point, um, if your page is, say, Robert Scoble's blog, right, then your title should say something like Robert Scoble's blog. Yep. Okay? If it says something like, you know, random thoughts, yep. that, that's not terribly helpful to us because people search, they're not going to be searching for random thoughts unless that happens to be the, the, the title of your blog and people know to search for random thoughts. Yeah. Um, so there's just, just things like that, right? I mean, keep in mind, if I was searching for this page, how would I search for it? And am I seeing the information on this page? Um, and once you semantic kind of, markup is, a, is yeah. a nice technique, right? Trans using heading tags, using even even using small things like bold and emphasis for the right stuff. Um, yeah. 
If it helps the user, the, our general story is if it helps the user, it helps us. Interesting. So, and Tantic actually went through my blog and actually helped me, you know, build a more semantic page with headers mm -hmm. on the titles and P tag for the body and yeah. not a weirdo markup. And you can look at it with a, a browser like Lynx, which uh, shows you basically a text only Still view. Works. Sort of Sort of gives you an idea of how your engine is sort of seeing this page as well. Yep. And um, yeah, title tag is a huge thing. I, I even covered that in my book. You know, come up with it instead of calling it Joe's Average Blog, call it like Joe's Average Blog about book publishing. If what helps the user evaluate books. the result when they see it in the description? As exactly. Well, yeah, right? because it, it's going to be like naked conversations. I can see right there is the title of my book, and that doesn't really help too, too many people. But, but if you have a bigger title that has some more information, it helps you visually, you know, when you're going down this page to pick on it and click on it, which probably helps your neural network, too. <laughs> so, no uh, comment. Once again. So I'm writing good title tags and good headlines and good, you know, and being a good writer and, and uh, you know, building a page that looks good uh, it certainly helps uh, mm -hmm. everybody. Um, what else could we cover? Result diversity as a challenge. Uh, what do you mean MSN by that? Got launched. Result diversity is the notion that you want to, it's not just about getting relevant content, it's about getting the right s types of relevant content. A yeah. lot of people issue ambiguous queries, right? Camcorder is an ambiguous query, Jaguar, all these things are have a multitude of meanings. Yeah. One of the challenges that I think is, is important for um, going well beyond the current search marketplace is being able to give you three choices, which are essentially embody the, am I ready to buy, am I researching, or am I just surfing? Yeah. Right, they give you the, the three levels there. For Jaguar, Jaguar, is it a car, is it an animal? <laughs> you know, what are you looking the, for? The Mac thing, yeah. 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 Um, so that that's a huge challenge that uh, that nobody has solved. Uh, Interesting. That, uh, that is on the, the uh, post-competitive parity list for, for relevance. So do you guys have a big list of things that you'd like to do? How do you find new ideas for the search engine? Do you just... But at two in the morning, you think, ah, oh, I wish we I We get a do lot this. of feedback. Yeah, we, we get a lot of examples <laughs> of cases where we don't solve the problem. And after a, a number of those, you, you start to, to get some, some ideas. I'll give you one example. We uh, launched our uh, site with a change from previous behavior when, when we used uh, the Inktomi engine. When you search for AOL.com, we would serve up only AOL.com. Well, that's not what our previous engine had done. And we had people who kept complaining about they couldn't find their email. So hundreds of people for the first couple days were complaining that they couldn't find their email. So we had to change it so that we served up all the front doors to AOL and you could go down to the sixth link and click email.aol.com. The, uh, the, what that's brought me to understand is that people will often search for something on some site, but they won't actually include what they're searching for. They'll just include the site name, yep. schwab.com. And then they'll tell us in feedback they were looking really for the rebate page. And so we had to figure out how to elicit the, 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 the rebate page idea once we clue them in that they've gotten to Schwab. Yeah. And so we've got some prototypes of, of ways that we can solicit um, the additional refinement within the, within the site. Wow. <laughs> There's... Again, I've been doing this for quite some time now. Sounds yeah. like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... A lot of what we're seeing is kind of the, the greatest hits of the 90s coming back. Yeah. Um, since Yahoo spent a lot of time working on their portal, so they never introduced a lot of the search things, but Google and our engine are, are new. Yeah. And so you're seeing a lot of things that you used to see at AltaVista and Excite and Lycos, and you're like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Um, we're trying to make it better, we're trying to fit it into the business model, we're trying to make it more user friendly. A lot of things like that are, are coming. Um, what about developer also, story? We haven't even talked about like APIs. That, that's we've got a great guys. API. Yeah, mm -hmm. and probably talk to so, some other people. I should probably interview about yeah. that, right? So, so that's, that's the next thing, which is uh, trying to figure out how do we treat search not just as a website, yep. right, but as a platform. Yep. Um, and th one of the ways I kind of look at it is, you know, consuming. HTML web results is, is one instance of a search engine. Um, you can imagine well, what if instead of web results they were um, songs. Yeah. And what if instead of consuming them as a web page, it was a playlist. 
right? Mm -hmm. Well, suddenly you could say, I want to say, what's relevant to Miles Davis? And you have Miles Davis radio, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That's just one instance. You can imagine applying this to video, right? Say, yeah. what's video related to Louisiana right now? You can kind of get the, the you know, podcasting feed um, for that. So there's lots of things you can do with search. And we're really you know, excited about some of the API things we've got going to enable not just us, but other people to use search as something to power their applications and build some really interesting um, applications and services on top of that. Are, are you ever going to give developers or guys like me complete access to the variables, to the, to the spider, to, tune, to build our own hand-tuned version of MSN um, for my own needs you know, or my customers' needs? We, we, at, at, at this point, we don't know. Okay. So um, I'm not, I'm not going to say no. Uh, the, what we're trying to understand right now You're already now is, heading that way a little bit with the sliders, right? The freshness and the... So, so, so what we're trying to do is, is enable you to say, well, I want to search over this corpus of stuff and using these queries and here's what's really important to me and get back the results that you want. Yeah. Okay? Now, we, giving you kind of access to the neural net isn't the right way of doing it because the way you set up the neural net is not something that you know most people can do. You know, it's, it's incredibly non-intuitive. Okay. Right? Um, <laughs> it's for guys like you. <laughs> even for me, it's incredibly non-intuitive. Right. So, I mean, it, it, it takes a lot to, to make it work. Once it does, it, it's just pretty cool. Um, but essentially, a lot of times, what people really want say is, you know, I just want to sort this by date. Right. So so give me access to this, search this subset of things, and sort by date. Yeah. Right. So that kind of stuff we'll, we'll have access to, and, and as we refine the API, we'll, we'll make more and more features to the engine available to it. Right. Lots of fun things you could do right now, like build a, a version of MS and search for the tablet. Right? Entering right. keywords is really painful, and refining your query is really difficult in the tablet. Imagine being able to pull words out of the contextual descriptions and add them in interesting ways. Yeah. We have, I think, a minute of tape left. So. Any other things that I need that I should know about search on this first field trip over here? I'm sure I'll be over more to talk about the, the other last, things the, when the, you guys roll out. The diversity study across engines was really interesting, um, which said that the the overlap between the big search engines is very small. So it behooves you as the user to to try more than one engine. Give us a <laughs> shot. Okay. And give you feedback, right? Yes, indeed. Click to help us improve. I'll be I'll be reading. You get all that email. All 8,000 yep. a day, man. All 8,000. <laughs> That's why you're losing your hair. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, guys. This was a lot of fun. All right. Thanks.